So if you've been struggling with playing your instrument, your saxophone in tune, if your pitches are all over the place, well watch this video for some tuning tips, some strategies, and one thing that most people don't tell you about when it comes to tuning the saxophone. Hi, I'm Donna from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site to boost your performance and improvisation skills up to the next level. So you've been using a tuner to tune and you're, you've been told to tune to maybe concert B flat or concert A. And once you tune that note, you get your mouthpiece on the cork and then you just start playing everything and then you're realizing not all the notes are staying in tune even though you tuned to concert B flat and or concert A. There's a variety of reasons for that. And let me start off with some of the three most common reasons why you may be going out of tune um, all over your horn. Reason number one, your reed strength may not be the right one for you. Now this is a little bit difficult for beginners. I tend to start beginners on reed strength two and I usually start using Rico Royals or uh, Van Doren Blue Box reeds. Uh, I don't like to start on a one and a half, yes, it's probably a little easier to produce a note, but to me those reeds are too soft and I'd rather have a little bit more substance to the reed and have a good reed to start with. So uh, that's for beginners. Now if your reed is too soft, what you may find is that certainly your highest notes are going to cut out, but they're also going to be flat and your lowest notes may be sharp. If your reed is too stiff, your high notes are going to be pretty sharp because it's going to feel it's just going to feel a little uncomfortable in your mouth if that reed is too stiff. Um, it's going to feel like it's hard and you're going to wind up forming bad habits in order to get the notes to come out in the first place. So your high notes, you're going to wind up probably biting to get those notes to come out and they're going to wind up being sharp. The lower notes, you may wind up having them sound flat because you're overcompensating the other way. All right, so reed strength. Super important, big reason why uh, we could possibly be out of tune or our intonation is affected all over the horn. Reason number two why you may have intonation problems. Your equipment is not quite right for you at that time in your playing. So as a beginner, you should not be starting with a metal mouthpiece or a, a mouthpiece with a step baffle. You shouldn't be starting with a large tip opening. Um, you don't know what you don't know. So if you're just watching YouTube videos and trying to learn the saxophone, this is what happens. You tend to find out what equipment your favorite player is using. You buy it and you think you're going to sound like them. It doesn't work that way. All right. You have to, I'd say, work up to that. But even more importantly, you have to find what works for you. So for beginners, you should be using the stock mouthpiece or a mouthpiece like a Yamaha 4C or Selmer C Star. Um, something with a smaller tip opening like a 4, maybe a 5 to start with. You don't want to get these astronomically high tip openings like 9s and 10s and maybe even 8s because that's not going to help you in your growth as a saxophone player. The other thing too, um, the baffle. You generally would want to start with either no baffle or a rollover baffle. That's, that's inside the mouthpiece. If you start with a step baffle, step baffle mouthpieces are harder to control the intonation with especially for beginners and also for intermediate level players. So that's where your equipment can really um, determine your intonation and it can harm you um, if you're thinking that you know, you're, you're able to play your favorite player's equipment. Now the other thing to consider also, you want to get an instrument that's good quality, that's durable, that um, is something that's, that's you know, stood the test of time, okay, that's a reputable brand. If you decide to go for a cheaper saxophone that you found, you know, in Costco or eBay or whatever, you run the risk of having the notes, the first thing that usually goes is the intonation, okay? The horn is usually not in tune. You're very lucky if it is, but most of the time it's not. And the hard thing is that you're not going to progress on the instrument if you have a substandard instrument. So you're better off, your first instrument should be something that you rent, um, and it should be like a used Selmer, a used Yamaha. Um, there are other very good brands out there. There are also some very good Chinese brands, um, Taiwanese, Vietnamese brands out there that are um, also pretty stable when it comes to intonation. You just have to be careful of the brands where it's no name. You have no idea what the brand is at all, okay? 
again, can totally affect your intonation. So, so far we have reed strength affecting your intonation, the equipment affecting your intonation. Reason number three why your intonation may be affected is that you're getting either wrong information, uh, you don't know what you don't know, or um, it's some misconceptions. So for example, one of the biggest misconceptions is that you drop your jaw to get low notes. Well, you're gonna go flat or you're just not gonna get the note to come out. Or the other misconception is that you put a death grip on the mouthpiece to get a high note. Okay, that's a subconscious feeling right there. High note, I gotta really tighten up. Trumpet players tend to do this as well. Um, in those kinds of situations, it's best to get advice from a teacher. It's always good to start out on any instrument, but especially a wind instrument, start with a teacher. Get a good foundation and then you move on from there. And now during these times with the, you know, the coronavirus pandemic, so many teachers are teaching online, including myself, that you could just reach out and take a series of lessons and just get that foundation that you need. Hey, do you like this video so far? Give me a like and please share it on your social media channels. And hey, while you're at it, tap that subscribe button so that you will be the first to know when my new videos come out each and every week. Okay, here's this one thing that I feel you should absolutely do even before you put the horn together. And you should do this uh, a number of times. You won't have to do this every single time before you play. And it's this, you should be tuning from the neck. All right. So a lot of people, when they approach tuning the instrument, they'll put the whole instrument together and they'll put a tuner on and they'll play with the tuner. Now that's not a horrible thing, it's not. But here's the thing, um, especially on a saxophone, you know, especially an alto saxophone from one octave to the other, the intonation tends to, can go all over the place, all right, if you're not hearing the pitches properly. But why not have a better chance of starting with success by tuning from the neck? The neck is super important because the neck, each point of the neck, each part of the neck corresponds to a note on the horn, okay? If you have dents in your neck or, you know, pull down or other problems with your neck, it's going to affect the intonation on the horn, all right? If you have um, one of those cheaper horns I was talking about before, chances are the neck is probably not gonna be the best quality either. Now, how do we tune from the neck? Well, each saxophone has a particular pitch to tune on the neck. So for alto, it's gonna be concert A flat, for tenor, it's going to be concert E. For Barry sax, it's gonna be concert D. All right, so concert A flat on an alto sax is alto F. So in this case, you'd wanna use some type of device to hear the pitch, and uh, you'd also wanna use a tuner as well. Here's where you will use your tuner, but you want to get this in tune. If you're in tune on the neck, you're gonna have better success of being tune, in tune on the horn. And I'm gonna show you what to do after we get this in tune over here. Once you match that pitch, concert A flat, and you see where your mouthpiece is on the cork, that's where it should stay when you put the neck back into the instrument. And now we're gonna use some pitches on the instrument to make sure that the pitch that's on the neck, that it's matching the instrument, and some of the chord tones, even some of the um, harmonics uh, that would match on the instrument as well. So first I would start with matching the pitch that was on the neck. So it's gonna be F plus the octave key, that's concert A flat. Then I would go to the C below that, no octave key. I would do the A below that, no octave key. I would do the F below that, no octave key. And finally, low C. Now, if you're a beginner, low C may be too hard to play at first, then just the low F would be fine enough. So my neck is in tune. So this is the right spot for my mouthpiece to be on the cork. What does that mean? 
That means that when I'm playing throughout the range of the horn, if there are some notes that are out of tune, I'm not going to adjust the mouthpiece on the cork. Instead, I'm going to adjust, I'm going to make adjustments inside my mouth. And I have lots of videos about that, and I deal with that directly in my Get a Killer Saxophone Tone course. I have a self-study course available. I'll put the link in the show notes below. Now, a couple of questions that you may have. Okay, so I tune my neck and my horn's in tune, but you know, when I play some of the palm key notes, they're really, really sharp. All right, well, some of these things that are going to happen are still going to be the result of the, the, um, the mistakes that I mentioned in the very beginning of the video. Okay, your reed strength, your equipment, your, even your approach. All right, so your approach to playing may be to bite to get the higher notes, to really bite into that reed. Uh, as opposed to really using your embouchure properly. Um, your low notes may be really flat. Well, you may be going off that assumption, and it's kind of an instinctual thing that you think low notes drop your jaw. Well, you may be going off that assumption, and that's what's happening there. Now, the other thing, too, to consider is that you could have a great instrument like a Mark VI, but still be um, have your lowest notes be out of tune. That's where you definitely need to see a repair person and just have your horn checked out um, especially for any leaks or any kind of, you know, bent or damaged rods um, or those types of things. Now, of course, once you've tuned from the neck, it's not let's set it and forget about it. You absolutely need to do your tone exercises and you should be using a tuner, but you want to use it in the proper way as opposed to just visually tuning all the time. And like I mentioned before, I cover a lot of these things in my Get It Killer Saxophone Tone course. But if you do want a uh, fatter, fuller tone, I do have a free video for you. It's three tips to get a fatter tone on the saxophone. I'm going to put the link in the show notes below. And in that video, it's three tips, three exercises that you can do right away that's going to help you to noticeably hear your tone getting fuller, richer, and fatter sounding.